Hey, what's up, family? It's Coach Josh. Hope y'all are doing exceptionally well on this Thursday. Hope you guys are getting ready for the weekend and, and getting ready to maximize it. But for those who joining me for the very first time, my name is Josh Rezzi, also known as Coach Josh, and my goal is to help make sense of your life and to help you grow holistically for God's optimal use. And after watching this video, like, man, I like this guy's vibe. Go ahead and subscribe because I would love to be a coach online. But for those who's been rocking me for a mighty long time, whether you've been rocking and subscribing and been listening for 13, 14 years, or you've just been a subscriber and listening for 13 and 14 minutes, I want to say thank you so much for trusting what God's entrusted in me. And I pray it continues to be tragedy. But for those who are new, who are unfamiliar with this kind of format, I answer questions live and, and in color. And um, if you love for me to be uh, uh, to answer your question, man, and you're like, man, I missed it this time. Make sure you hit uh, you subscribe and all post notifications so that you'll be able to get um, that I that notification that you know, hey, man, Coach Josh live, and I'll be able to answer your question. But for those, uh, as everyone's coming in and getting their questions ready, if you need one on one coaching, if you need help with your relationships, you need help for spiritual development need help with your singleness, your purpose, and your branding, or anything of that nature, or you need to talk to me, and you need someone to kind of guide you through your particular and unique situation, I'm here for you. So make sure you hit the uh, link in the description box below, and I'll love to coach you. Um, if, you look, if you're looking for a book to help you process your feelings, to find the facts behind them, here's a great resource and a great book for you, Facts Over Feelings, How to Go from Feeling to Fulfilling. Also, if you're looking for a book to help you hold things better, you want to hold your marriage better, hold your future marriage better, or you just want to position yourself to hold the important things in life, here's a great journal for you to be honest with yourself and really assess if you're able to hold. A book, the, the book that sparked that kind of book is this book here, The Purpose of Singleness. If you're looking for a book to help you understand the purpose of singleness and how to maximize it, this book here, The Purpose of Singleness, will be a great resource for you. I also got a book called Dating Prep. It's a great book to help you really date yourself, date God, and become data bold. It has a lot of questions in this book that will either help you end the wrong relationship or extend the right one. So a great resource there. If you're looking for a book to help you to uh, discern what's in front of you, to make sure that you accept God's best and not entertain the devil's pest and to learn the difference between a counterfeit and a counterpart, this book would be a great resource for you. If you're looking for a book to help you with soul ties and strongholds and how to untie and uproot them, The Purpose of Freedom would be a great book for you. If you're struggling with uh, spiritual warfare you, or you want to better understand the whole armor of God, this book, World War Me, would be a great book for you. And we also have children's books for kids, third grade, and up we also have merch and if you're looking to support what i do online or whatever it is you can go to my website now i am unplugged.com all right let's see who's in the building now oh we got christopher christopher says hey coach you've been active a lot recently grateful for the content you're so welcome man what well, i work at a school man so this, I'm, I'm off a lot <laughs> summers uh breaks and stuff like that so I'm, I'm here to serve i'm here to be a tool and a resource for you all so I'm excited and I'm glad uh, to serve you all. Christina Stubbs says, hey, coach, can you talk a bit about how you successfully navigated seasons of change or transitions in your life? OK, great. Great question. I could definitely talk about the most recent ones, maybe the last seven years of transitions and whatnot. And, and uh, one thing that I uh, what helped me was realizing that these this too shall pass and not to make a permanent situation out of a temporary season. I also begin to realize that transitions are where I'm the most vulnerable, so I should dig deep. I should begin to really stay watchful, stay prayerful, stay self-examining, stay stay self-aware, because anytime you move from a place of familiarity to a place unfamiliar, um, there's a lot of questions. So your faith can be tested, your faith can be questioned, and there's a lot of opportunities for spiritual warfare, right? Because you're navigating like the children of Israel. You're leaving Egypt and going to the promised land. You don't know nothing about no Red Seas. You don't even know that Pharaoh's trying to come after you. But either way, the one that's guiding you is God. And one thing that gave, that gives me peace as I transition is realizing that I'm on mission and I have to trust God's vision. If I'm on a mission, meaning that I'm on a mission that God has me on, then I'm guaranteed to go on the other side. Jesus got in the boat with his disciples and he says, we will get to the other side. No matter the storm that came, Jesus went to sleep because he knew that it don't, it don't matter what type of storm comes. It don't care if it's hurricane type winds. If I'm on the boat and I ain't on the cross yet, we're going to cross over. And so when I begin to understand who I am and who's in the boat with me, then I, no matter what comes, I'm guaranteed to make it to the other side. And so the goal is to stay on mission. If you're in the will of God and God is the one transitioning you and God's the one changing your life, you know for a fact that you're guaranteed to make it to a place that's better than where you're coming from. 
And so some practical things is to, to, to daily um, be self-aware to check yourself to make sure that you're not wavering. Uh, um, um, maybe be maybe be a little bit more quiet during your transition. Maybe don't let too many people know you're transitioning or changing, so you don't have to deal with unnecessary uh, noises and people's opinions. And 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 just be more self-aware. Examine your thoughts. Keep your emotions stable, and and get excited because wherever God is taking you, it's going to be better than where you're coming from. Hope to help. All right, Jessica J says. Hey, coach, hope you're doing well. All is well over here. I appreciate it. I deal with schizophrenia and in the process and in this in the process, lost my trust in hearing God because of spirit of pride and falling false spirits. How do I restore my relationship? Well, the restoration of a relationship begins with really understanding who you are in relationship with. And secondly, you got to make sure you stop identifying yourself with any type of illness. Anytime you begin to vocalize or internalize a disease of yours, then you, you're giving demons even more real estate to make it even more uh, prominent in your life. So what I would start doing is saying, I, I wouldn't even mention the word schizophrenia because it sounds like a demon. Anytime you hear these doctor terms and it sounds crazy like that, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a demonic name, right? And so if you deal with it, uh, um, um, heal from it by understanding who you're in a relationship with, right? And so you said, and in the process, lost my trust in hearing from God. Well, the enemy is going to try to make you have a false uh, uh, idea about God, make you think that God's not there, that God is not with you. You got to begin to dig deep. This is what I would do now. I will go on Google and I will type in the top attributes of God and I will begin in the next few weeks, each week, pick an attribute and do a deep study about it and then begin to self-examine how God has been that to you in your life and how God is being that to you now, right? And then begin to uh, uh, get be, a vent to God, process to God, talk to God. Demons, especially if you be entertaining um, um, diseases or mental illnesses like that, is going to try to uh, increase their warfare on your mind. That's why you got to put on the helmet of salvation. You got to realize who you are and what you're being saved from, right? And so you stop, stop vocalizing and internalizing your your illness. Because if you begin to identify with it, then that will become the dominant uh, guide in your life. And then begin to uh, uh, um, deal deeply with, with any type of root issues that may have. It's crazy. We start talking about demons and stuff like that. <laughs> stuff that happens with your technology. Give me one second. Yeah, yeah, see, that's what happens. But what I'm saying is that you just got to begin to 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 intentionally and aggressively um, pursue your healing and intentionally and aggressively uh, stay rooted in your relationship. And so how do you restore your relationship with God? Get to know him in a real way. Get to know him for how he wants to be known, right? Uh, uh, begin to engage more in the things of God. Um, also begin to um, 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 talk to him, speak to him, communicate with him. Right. Uh, and then, and then track God's truck, track, uh, track God's faithfulness towards you so that you can begin to track his faithfulness towards you in the future. Right. And then just, just begin to continue to be obedient to him and then begin to, um, recognize ways or get to the root issue, get to the root issue on what's trying to get you from not um, engaging with the Holy Spirit and get to know God and enjoy God. That's how you restore. Number one, get to know God in a real way or um, uh, engage in the things of God and exercise, get more into the elements and begin to uh, 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 release some of those endorphins. Also, you got to make sure that you speak to him, talk to him. Uh, next, you got to, uh, uh, what did I say for T? Change the way you think. That could be one thing. Oh, obey him. Just be obedient and follow and open the word of God more. Open your mouth up in prayer and the rest. You know what else what I said, but I hope that's helped family and, and stop identifying yourself with those diseases. It's not beneficial. Jojo Davis says, what's up, Coach Josh? It's Jojo out of Fort Worth. What's up, family? <clears throat> How do I handle God putting me through and put it, putting pressure on me to level up, realizing that whatever's up is better than where you are now? And so you handle it by, by understanding that this is pruning. The Bible says that he prunes the branch so that it bear more fruit. Pruning means that he's straightening you. He's 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 uh, angling you so that the vine won't be cut off and that the vine so that the vine can get to the fruit stem so that the fruit can uh, um, produce. And so perspective is everything. 
And so when you have perspective on the pressure and you have perspective on the process, then you will actually embrace the process and let the process 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 out of you anything that's processed in you negatively and, and not beneficial to what God wants to do through you. So that's the best advice I can give you on that. Christopher says, I wonder if the journey with God is meant to be harder as you grow with him. More distraction and temptation. It doesn't grow harder. It doesn't get, what I mean by that is the higher you go to a degree, the more intense it may become, but the spiritual gifts and the spiritual fruits that you have that it has internalized in you and has developed in you, it makes it easier no matter how harder it gets, right? So it won't be necessarily distractions and temptations because distractions and temptation loses their flair, loses their power, the more your mind is renewed. So as your mind is being renewed, then you're more focused than you've ever been before. You're more dedicated than you've ever been before. Um, um, the, uh, the temptations are no longer temptations. Now the tests may get harder because the training is getting more elite to, to elevate you to a place of complete to, completeness where you actually can get to a level of competeness. And what I mean that you're complete enough to compete at a high level and 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 and, and overcoming the traps of devils and and uh, and moving principalities. And, and really operating at a high level for the kingdom of God. So distractions and temptations don't get harder because the better you get, the more mind, the more your mind is renewed. Those things begin to lose their flair. They begin to lose their power. But what gets a little bit more difficult is maybe spiritual warfare, maybe uh, 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 um, dealing with uh, uh, demonic opposition through people that you love. Um, a lot of other things that may get a little bit more dif difficult as the higher you get the things of God is, is the, the training may get a little bit difficult. The preparation may get a little bit more difficult. But as far as temptation and distractions, if your mind has been renewed and you are growing in the things of God and you're going from glory to glory and higher in your story, then then you, 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 those things will begin to fade away. And they won't. Now, don't get me wrong. Those things can become distractions based upon um, the season that you might be in. Because just because you have elevated to a high level doesn't mean that you can't lean right or try to cling to old things so it all boils down to consistency and being persistent and staying on mission now if you stay on mission you stay focused then distractions and temptation lose their flair the testers get a little bit more difficult because god's trying to make you durable if that makes sense would you say once an addict always an addict fight the same temptation forever no i don't believe that because um, whom the sun sets free is free indeed um any man who or woman that be in christ they are a new creature old things have passed away and behold all things become new no, nah, I don't believe always an addict, once an addict is always an addict, or you have to fight some temptation. It all boils down to perspective and mind being renewed. Could it be that those things, demons are not going to stop using those things? No, they ain't going to stop using them because the devil didn't stop using Peter. <laughs> the devil didn't stop using people around Jesus to try to get him off mission. The devil didn't stop using what what, uh, what he did stop, but he's going to always try to use something that could possibly um, be used against you. <clears throat> And so uh, temptation, demons don't stop doing what demons do. They're going to always try to look for a more opportune time. But I do believe in the sanctification of the Holy Ghost. I do believe that, that you can be a new creature and that, and that old things, man, I ain't had a honey bun in four years, five years. I'm a new creature. <laughs> I'm messing with you. But yeah, I don't believe in that. But, but you have to have the right perspective realizing, hey, um, Am I am I cooperating with the sanctification process to ensure that this thing is processed out of me so that I won't even have to worry about even having a taste or curiosity for it? Hope to help. Here, friends, how do you heal when you've been hurt emotionally and mentally? I've been traumatized by trusted people like. I don't understand why my internet does this at this time of the day. I mean, nothing else is on. It's not like I have any other devices connected. But every other time of the day is, is pretty, pretty decent. But anyway, we're going to keep it rocking. We're going to keep it rolling. Kier Franklin says, how do you heal when you've been hurt emotionally and mentally? I've been traumatized by trusted people like family. Thank you for answering. Yep. The goal in life, no matter what life throws your way, is to learn from life so that you can earn from life. Um, how do you heal when you've been emotionally and mentally wounded or hurt is, is realizing 
the state you were in at that moment and the state they were in. So instance, for Jesus on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And you also got to forgive yourself. And Jesus didn't say this because Jesus didn't have to forgive himself. But you have to forgive yourself for you knew not what you were doing. You have to you have to begin to get in the thought processes. You got to pull open the cage, open the mind, and where all those wires are. You know, when you at an IT uh, or where the, uh, the motherboard is and, and you over there where all the communication cords and all that stuff is at a company, you open the thing and you see all these wires. That's what you got to do to your mind. Look at all these wires, all these thought processing wires. And I want you to begin to assess all those thought processes that's making you still feel traumatized. You got to begin to change your perspectives on those different things. The first perspective you got to change is, is that you survived it. The enemy wants you to be key to be traumatized by it to the point to where you never thrived, that you never thrived by it. You never grow from it. You never develop a ministry or develop an avenue or develop a, a, a hunger for God from it. He wants you to continue to be traumatized. So the number one thing you got to audit your thought patterns and you got to begin to realize that you're that you survived it, that no matter what they've done. You still won. and Or if you haven't won yet mentally, emotionally, you can win through the help of the Holy Ghost, right? And you got to assess the hurt. What really hurts you? And in dealing with the hurt, you got to begin to process the hurt all the way thoroughly. What were the compounding hurts that occurred? Was it was it the was it the was it the camp the hair that broke the camel's back, the symptom that you noticed, or what really traumatized you? Also, how to heal emotionally from hurt? You got to really begin to process who you are in God and your self esteem and your self worth. See. It's, we become afraid to overcome our hurt because the hurt is all we've been familiar with, right? But we got to begin, because if you change the way you think about your hurt, you can change the way you feel about your hurt. And if you know who to give your hurt to, then you will begin to see uh, um, uh, who was hurt because of you. And that because of that hurt on the cross that happened to Christ, now you don't have to carry this anymore because he already carried this on the cross for you. So now you can cross over. So now you got to begin to understand God's love towards you because God's love towards you will lead you to love yourself and it will lead you to let loose of anything that, that traumatized you so that you can begin to be lovable and loving and so that you can begin to level up. And but you got to understand then, <clears throat> even though you have once trusted them, don't, don't rust from your lack of trust. Don't rust from the trust that you had with them. And so what you do is say, okay, hey man, it is what it is. And yes, these people hurt me. Yes, these people, whatever with me, but I'm going to move on. Now you got to develop why you should move on. What's why you should move on? Why, who do you need to be healed for? Who are you married? Are there kids involved? Or, or is it, are you just single? You got to say, I have to heal. I have to heal. Let's go. Let's break it down. In order to overcome and over to heal from a, a traumatized situation, you have the number one uh, go to the only one that can help you. H, go to the only one that can help you. Vent to God. Talk to God. Process every day if you have to. God doesn't get tired of you. Keep coming to him about the same thing, especially if you're trying to empty your heart of an old thing. So go to the only one that can help you. Have honest conversations with him. Um, um, find out how you can uh, get more hope in him. Grow your hope in him. Um, um, then begin to... Uh, um, uh, examine why, who do you need to heal for? Who do you need to heal for? I need to heal because if I cannot, if I do not heal, I cannot deal. Next, you got to begin to engage the day, engage the day, because sometimes engaging the day distracted you from the old days of being traumatized. Next, you got to begin to empty out all the toxicity towards those individuals, write all those people down on a sheet of paper and write down exactly what they did to you and then begin to process what they did to you through the scriptures and begin to say, I have to forgive you. Even if you have to confess that every day, the Bible says when Peter came to Jesus and was like, yo, if I forgive my brother or if I give, forgive someone seven times, is that is that enough? Because the Jewish law was forgive someone three times and you don't have to forgive them anymore. They off your record. No, Jesus said no, 70 times seven, 490 times in a day. You have to forgive them. So you write on a sheet of paper all the all the people that hurt you, all the things they've done. And then when they pop up, if you memorize or whatever, pull up on your phone and be like, no, I, I forgive. Because the issue is when we forgive a person, the spiritual contract has been severed. The renouncing of demonic connections have been severed. You have, you have forgiven them. It's off the record as far as your heart towards them. 
When you genuinely spiritually forgive a person in the spirit realm, it's cleared off your record. The issue is, is not the record in, in, in eternity. It is the, the residue of the heart and the renewal of the mind. You have to then begin to renew your mind to cooperate with the action that's already been done spiritually. And when you begin to do that, then you begin to see um, over time, the steam gets a little lighter, the feelings begin a little bit be lighter, and then you begin to start walking in L in love, in love. And so I hope that helped. I know I rambled, but I, 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 I was, you know, shooting all over the place, but I hope, I hope that it hits you in the right place in your heart. Sophia James says, hi, Josh. Can you advise me on how to keep positive when I feel dissatisfied with my current state of life? How to stay positive is having the right perspective. There's two types of perspectives or a couple, maybe one perspective that's coming to my mind right now that you can have in a situation that you're dissatisfied in is that either that God is pruning and prepping me. Even if I, even if I don't like where I am, I'm going to take on the challenge because the challenge is that this is going to develop my character. This is going to create in me a new heart and renew a right spirit in me. This is going to take my heart stone and make it a heart of flesh. This has the possibility of making me better. No matter where I am, my perspective is always set on this will make me better and this too shall pass. There's two perspectives. This will make me better and this too shall pass. And I'm going to make sure I don't do anything in this situation to make this permanent. So if you dissatisfied, you got to find satisfaction in God, not satisfaction in where you are. The issue is we look at, we tend to look at happiness in temporary places. We try to look for happiness in places where God only wants us temporarily. And then when we can't find that happiness or the conditions begin to change or God is about to make a change in our lives, we become dissatisfied because we have transitioned from finding satisfaction in God, him being our joy, him being everything, to now we're trying to find hope and peace peace and love and joy in the place and not in the person. Some people get dissatisfied because the place that they once walked, that the place they're in right now was a place to be, to prove to other people that I've leveled up or to prove to other people that I'm better than. Some people are finding once found satisfaction in the place and now they find dissatisfaction because now the conditions are changing and the power structure has changed. They no longer have that control or whatever. So no matter where you are and you may not like it, you got to start doing things. You got to start uh, realizing that this is going to make me better. Now, the goal is, is to actually get better. The only way to make a temporary season temporary is to get better. Some people make a temporary season last longer because they don't get better. They get sour. They get bitter. They don't get better. And they, and they never grow out of the environment. You see what I'm saying? So if you dissatisfy the current state, you got to investigate how, how I got here. Investigate how did you get here? Did God bring you to the wilderness or did you wander into a random wilderness? Two different ways. If God led you out of Egypt and you're just dissatisfied because you had a Red Sea, you got to trust that God's going to bring you through. If you wandered in your own and you and you send your way in, or you uh, <clears throat> guided your way in or was tempted in or whatever, then you got to begin to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you that so that you can know what to repent from and do what to renew your mind on so that you can be rerouted out of that situation. It all boils down to how you get in there. If you got in there because of a sin, you got to repent. You got to renew your mind. You got to change the way you think. And you got to put your hope in God so you can be rerouted back out of that. If you've been brought into this situation because of God, Get better, my friend. Level up and get better because it's going to make you better. And that's how you change your perspective. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now it says, how can you know if the Holy Spirit is confirming a decision you are making? Um, you know for a fact the Holy Spirit is confirming by connecting the familiar dots. So I know the strong unction. I know the strong feeling Depending on the situation, and if it's a warning, it's a little bit stronger because uh, he wants to get your attention no matter the noise, no matter what, because your your regiments are, are whatever it is, and it may be strong in you because he's like, nah, 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 we're not going there. Don't go that way, right? Because it's a warning type of, you know, we know that warning type feel. The other type of ways is realizing that I set the tone so I can hear his tone. I set the tone so I can hear his tone no matter where it is. That means my life is not loud. My life is not loud. My, my life is pretty quiet so that no matter what, I know when 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 it's time to move in a particular different way. Now, when it's time to confirm the Holy Spirit, confirming the decision you've already made, 
then then it 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 confirms itself. So for instance, me being married to my wife, I don't have to go to God and be like, God, confirm this to me. It keeps confirming itself randomly. It'd be random situations where my wife would say something and, or we talking about life and purpose. And it, because we are in uh, God's firm grip and we were actually placed in his hand and he has a firm grip on us, it just naturally confirms itself that this is of God, right? So now you got to ask yourself, am I waiting for the Holy Spirit to confirm something that I decided without acknowledging him or has the Holy Spirit already confirmed and I'm just waiting for confirmation uh, uh, while I'm making it. That's where you got to begin to see whether where, if, if there was spiritual error. And if you felt like, hey, I jumped into this hoping that God will confirm it, then you may want to slow your life down. Maybe not if it's a decision as far as relationship, I will slow the pace down. If it's, if it's slowable, I will slow it down until you know that 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 this is the way you're supposed to go that you go that you go, right? So I hope to help. Jessica J says, with God, if I thought the false spirits were him and I no longer know his voice, feel it's hard because I struggle with false thoughts and beliefs and God is upset because of that. God's not upset with you because of that. That's another that's another angle the enemy wants to use again. He's not upset. He's not upset with you. No, he's not upset. And what I mean by upset, because upset at least it means he's disappointed. God, God is so self-sufficient. He's not bothered by your decisions. We put too much power and too much stake in our decision as if our decisions can affect the emotional temperament of God who's who's separated not need to be connected by for self-sufficiency to us that doesn't mean that God doesn't have feelings doesn't mean that God but he's not gonna get to the levels of upsetness because his uh, his wrath has already been appeased by his son right and until now his wrath is being compounded to the day of judgment but as far as being upset that's you 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 you're set you're you're thinking that you have more uh power to affect God, right? And so the enemy's gonna be like, "Oh, you upset God." And what happens when we have when we, when we have upset at people? We start then thinking that God would be upset, like people be upset with us, being rude, turning back on you, not talking to you. That's not how God does. So we have to remove human characteristics and not put them on top of God, so they won't think that God is a certain type of way. Hope to help. For those who are joining me right now live. Let you guys know about one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you need relationship coaching, spiritual development coaching, you need help with your singleness, you have questions in the queue or questions I've already answered, you need a little bit more clarity on there, book me for a coaching session. I would love to support you in all these different facets. The link in the description box below. I'll go ahead and post the website now in the chat so that you guys can know um, exactly where to find um, those coaching resources. Let me find it. Here we go. So if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, let me know. I got a lot of time. I got a lot of uh, slots in July for sure and a, and a good handful in one-on-one -on -one coaching. I don't know why my internet is acting up, but either way, there's the links down there. Let's go back up. Kiddo, what's going on, girl? Thank you for joining me on the live. Always good to see you. All right, let me make sure I find. I can also just get how can you know if Christina Stubb says, Amen. It helps so much. Thanks, coach. God gets the glory. I'm glad it was a blessing. I'm glad it helped you. Uh, Miss Love says, Hey, coach, I'm attracted to a guy with Asperger's, high functioning autism. Sadly, his fiance left him two years ago. Every time we generally talk relationships, this comes up. How do I navigate this? Well, you navigate it by, let me tell you this, uh, you never want to deal relationally with someone that hasn't fully healed from previous relationships. You never want to make deals with someone that has yet to heal. Why? Because you don't want to be somebody's Band-Aid. You don't want to be somebody's medicine to get them off of some other incident. Right. And so when you begin to talk relationships, and you begin to see this. He's not fully healed yet. And so I wouldn't make deals with him until he's fully healed. And sometimes we get in relationships and we're we're drawn by people's diseases. We're drawn by people's Ill illnesses. We're drawn. Some people just have a savior's complex. Some people are are trying to be too much to too many people. Right. And sometimes when you are drawn by people's issues and you make a relationship out of the issue bond, then you're going to eventually have more issues because that person is 
not really trying to uh, build a bond with you. They're trying to have you be their healing bond. They want you to be their healing bond. They want you to heal them from the other relationship bond. And they don't even really necessarily want to be with you. And so if a person is not healed from a previous relationship, don't make deals in a new relationship with them because you're only going to set yourself up to be hurt and you're going to end up being a doctor that only Christ can be. Never try to be a doctor. Only be a nurse to what God wants you to be a nurse for. See, there are certain people, we've, I've been guilty of it, and people with big hearts, they'll stay in relationships longer than they need to. A lot of people stay in relationships longer than they need to because they want to, they have false hopes. They have false hopes. They think they can actually be the one to heal the man. They think they actually could be the one to heal the woman. And you end up being hurt while you heal them. And then when you've been used to heal them um, halfway or psychologically, mentally or emotionally, they then move on. Then they heave you because they didn't even want really to be with you. And then all of a sudden, now you start developing a hidden river of resentment inside of you because you put all this work. In a work that you weren't even supposed to do, only God can heal someone mentally, emotionally, and physically, and spiritually. Only God can get the deep healing. And if every time y'all talk about relationships, she comes up, that the fiance left, then he's too hurt. And if he's hurt, get out the dirt. Because only thing you want to do is get yourself hurt in the process. So now you got to begin to assess the bonds that you have built with this man. And begin to really ask them, is this even worth it? It's crazy we take jobs and don't be fully compensated for the job that we jumped in. I am I don't have to worry about compensation in my marriage. Therefore, I don't have expectations. I don't have expectations. Therefore, I don't expect compensation because I know God is the one that compensates. When I'm in his vision, in his mission, he compensates. So I can sacrificially serve my wife because I know who truly compensates. I don't need her to compensate me. So I, I serve freely. I don't expect the return from this. I don't expect the return from that because I know this is who God has given me and God is great me for her. Therefore, he's going to give me the compensation. So if she needs to talk to two in the morning, he will compensate me with a rested and sweet and a sweet sleep because I'm his beloved. He will compensate, but God will not compensate for a decision that you made that's contradictory to what he wants to do in your life. So now you're going to be spending all of this energy on this man. This man is only came to you because he wants to be healed. And now you want to make deals and it's going to be hard to make deals when you keep hearing about her. So I navigate this. You might want to shut the thing down. You might want to stop, stop the relationship right now because he's not healed. And God will never cause you to come into someone's life to be their healing. Relationships was meant for dealing, not healing. Relationships were meant to make deals, not to make heals. I'm telling you right now, if you jump into a relationship and y'all are healing each other, y'all are out of timing, out of season, or out of connection with God. Relationships, relationships was meant to make deals. Soon as I got married, the goal in life was not trying to heal her. We were trying to make deals with her. You see what I'm saying? You don't have time to make healings when you are in relationships. You got to be focused on making deals. And if y'all can't make deals and y'all focus on trying to make heels, then y'all not going to find your heels in the fields of harvest. So my friend, count the cost and consider the loss and leave, in my personal opinion, or begin to distance yourself and, and really have a conversation like, listen, I think we shouldn't do this right now because I think you still need to heal from her. Jody Real says, what is forbidden in the bedroom in a Christian marriage? Great question. What, uh, the Bible says the wedding bed is undefiled. Uh, so the best advice I can give you is converse, communicate. I, I don't I now I don't think certain things should be done. And that's just my personal opinion. I don't I ain't, ain't gonna get too vulgar, but uh, I don't think you should go into an exit. That's just my opinion. I don't think yeah, I don't, you know, we don't we don't go through exits, you know what I'm saying? I, I, that, and now that's between you and the Holy Ghost, but you know what I'm saying. Man, me being me, my opinion, if it's an exit, don't enter. Um, but I, but the 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 foundational point is have you have to have a conversation with your spouse. There are certain things that you may want to do in a marriage bed, and maybe some things that you want to do, but if your wife or husband is not cool with that, then you got to be cool with that. As simple as that. See, sex is not meant to be served, it's meant to serve. 
And so if your wife or husband don't want that service, don't be all in your feelings and be like, oh, man, that's what patience is for. That's what long suffering is for. That's what making sure that lust is not is lust is not lingering in you as you being led into a marriage. Because if you have these sexual expectations, going, so the thing about me, when I got married, I had no sexual expectation, no sexual expectation, because that's not fair. I, I don't have no. Ex- I gave my wife no expectations uh, besides biblical ones. The only expectation I have about my wife are biblical ones. I don't expect her to cook three meals a day. I don't expect her to, 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 to whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't expect it because expectation leads to disappointments. Expectation it never leads to disappointment. When you create these expectations that a person is not ready to meet or doesn't even desire to meet, then you're going to set a disappointing tone in your relationship. And all of a sudden you're disappointed because now she doesn't want to do this for you. Now she don't want to do that with you. And you had all these heaping expectations especially those who's been waiting for marriage or those who may have who have been waiting for years but they've had sexual experiences before but now they're waiting you start creating this sexual tension that sexual tension has to be uh, uh, uh routed it has to be filtered through creativity it has to be filtered through god it has to be filtered through mind renewal because that sexual energy is not fil- is not filtered then you start creating all these expectations you start creating all these expectations sexually, then obviously when you get into the wedding bed, your wife may have communicated at one point, I'm down for the pound. But then when you get into the marriage town, she's like, not right now. Now you got to frown. You got to be able to say, I've already filtered that sexual energy. I, I put sex in perspective. And, and this perspective of sex is to serve and not to be served. And in serving it, you don't. You, a waiter doesn't come and be like, here's your meal. And like we, we just got the menu. No, here's your meal. This is what I'm serving you. This no, you, you know, you I know you want a hamburger. I know you want this glizzy. <laughs> I know, I know you, and then she's like, that's not even what I ordered. And then you're over there all disappointed because, but you are supposed to serve. What do you want, honey? Do you even want this in this marriage? If not, I don't care if y'all listen, if y'all gonna be missionary all, all the whole marriage, that's fine. It, it don't matter what it is, you gotta have patience, love, understanding. And, and 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 all that kind of stuff so that you don't have this this disappointing because a lot of people have these expectations for the wedding night and then when a wedding night come there's a wedding fight because there's more that y'all want to do and can't do or what if what if things don't work out the way uh because if you have this expectation and he's and he don't put it down like you expected or she wasn't really to go, willing to go as far as you expected then, then are y'all gonna still hold each other y'all still gonna love on each other y'all still gonna uh 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 uh, uh just do what y'all can do so that's the real thing that i want to set the tone is is having having that sexual energy already filtered through Make sure that you don't allow your sexual energy to become a sexual enemy to your spouse and just and know that sex is about serving and not being served. Hope, uh, hope that help. Christine Williams says, oh, man, I went all the way down. Man of God, can God tell you someone is your husband or wife? God can tell you anything, but God's not going to tell you anything if your heart's not ready. Uh, I don't think God necessarily tells who am I to say what God can do? Because God can do anything. But but I know God is probably not going to do it if you're not ready. If you're not ready to receive. Like, for instance, you know you're ready to receive and you don't really know if you're ready until it happens. So let's put that there. But you know you're ready to receive an answer from God when you can continue to do what you've been told to do and you put the answer on the shelf. You know you're at a place of contentment where you're like, oh, that's cool, God. And you put it on the shelf. You may spend about five minutes or five hours just smiling about it and being excited about it, but you're right back on mission. You're like, all right, cool. I'm not going to allow this to distract me. You see what I'm saying? Soon as David was told that he was king, David still went back out to the field. David was told that he was going to be the next king of Israel, and he had to still go back out there and handle sheep. That's the mentality you got to have. You've been told that you're going to be king or you've been told that this man's going to be your king as a head of your house. You go right back in the field. That's when you know you're, you're the real deal. But if you receive it and you know you ain't talked to God, you know you're not content with God and you know that you know that you know that you're not where you need to be. And chances are that was sent by the enemy. Hope to help. We got a little bit more people you know, live. A lot of people don't really know that I'm offering coaching right now. So if you need coaching with your relationships, spiritual development, singleness, purpose, branding, or if you have any questions of a particular situation that you just need help with, whether it's family stuff, relationship stuff, whatever it is, 
Uh, the link is in the description box below. Get your coaching session in now. I have a, a good handful of slots available. I look forward to serving you all. Let's keep going. <clears throat> man, boy, y'all, man, y'all really trust me with y'all questions, man. I, I thank y'all, man. I, God gets the glory. LV says, how to better my character? I notice instances that I should work on. I enjoy being serious and focused because my goals need it. Having fun and joking around has not gotten me in far in the past. Let me see if you wrote anything else, LV. <clears throat> okay. How to better my character. I notice instances that I should work on it. I enjoy being serious and focused because of because my goals needs. Having fun and joking around. Yeah, man. You, 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 there's, there's, there's multiple ways that your character can be developed. Your character can be developed by the current season that you're in allowing it to test your faith. So what happens to me? No matter what season I'm in, I always assess how was my love today? Did it, did it, did it, do I feel like it's growing? I'm not talking about day to day. I'm talking about season by season or month by month or quarter by quarter. And I always assess, okay, if this, like when I play basketball, great example. When I play basketball and 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 I play against uh, 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 intense competition, I always gauge, okay, how did you handle that, Josh, when someone, whatever, a long few weeks back, didn't handle it too well. Now it's like, okay, when I play ball now, I intentionally say, you know what, Josh, give the ball up, smile, yep, no, don't, don't argue the call, whatever, whatever. I have to begin to say, okay, in this season, what made me so intense? How do you handle disrespect now, Josh? So what I'm saying is, as I enter into certain seasons or things are coming against me, after the incident, I assess. I assess, how did you, did you give it your best? Are you stressed, Josh? It, I start examining my season of rest. Josh, are you rested in God all the way? What's causing, even, even a little bit of restlessness can turn into big restlessness. So I began to examine all that, those kind of things to make sure I don't fall into those traps, right? And so also I constructively work on my character, meaning that if I have an issue with patience, I, or, or not, because I, I, God has really created, him, well, who, who, I can't even boast in that, so I ain't going to say that. But what I'm saying is that with impatience, you can do is this. When you're in a line, just say, you know what? I ain't going to get upset. If I'm in traffic and I usually, and you usually get upset because you're in traffic, I'm not going to get upset in traffic no more. So you intentionally, when you feel that, even, not, pull it back. That's you working on your character. You're now stretching that patient muscle. You're stretching that joy muscle. So when you find yourself in a season that you're just like, I don't like it here. No, you say, no, no, I'm going to find the joy of the Lord here. I'm going to intentionally find. That's how you stretch that spiritual character. That's how you stretch that character of yours. It's taking on the challenges when they come. Constructively, intentionally uh, impacting your character. Those are the two main ways, I think, um, that you can really work on your character in the meantime. Hmm. I gotta go in a little bit, y'all. Make sure, make sure my wife didn't call. So yeah, you need one-on-one -on -one coaching. Let me know how I can serve you all, man. And if you in those books, check out all those books, man. I think a lot of those books and card games, I think, will be beneficial to a lot of you all situations for sure. Uh, let's see. Okay, somebody already booking. Everybody, some people already putting emails in. That's good. All right. Okay, wife's good. All right. Two more. I gotta go, y'all. And I might be on a little bit later today. I might be on a little bit later. Here, Franklin says, "How do you come back dreams of being chased, fought almost every night? I've had these tormenting dreams. Well, you gotta begin to uh, first examine the territory." Examine the territory. If you're being tormented, examine the territory. Um, have you, uh, what I mean by territory is start saying, okay, Holy Spirit revealed to me any type of territorial spirits of this place that I rested in. A lot of people, you just can't move into homes, man. You just can't move into homes and being excited about homes and just, and act like the, that the ground ain't territorial, uh, like like the, the the structure or we you don't even know what the other person did in that home. You don't know what witchcraft happened in there. You don't know what type of sins happened in the home. And you just can't just go into certain homes without cleaning them spiritually how do you clean a home you get some anointing oil or you get someone with a stronger faith than you you can maybe call your pastor pastor come in the house and pray over your home and cast out territorial demonic spirits and if you don't have a pastor you can do it yourself you get you some anointing oil set that oil aside put oil in a little jar uh pray over the oil you can say the prayer like this uh heavenly father i sanctify this oil for your heavenly use everything this oil touches represents 
the Holy Spirit's domain. And it, it will be used for laying on of hands. It'll be used to cast out demons. It'll be used to mark the Holy Spirit's territory in Jesus' name. Right? Amen. Get to all, mark every doorpost, window, door, head, headbed of the bed, right? And then um, uh, start uh, telling these demons to leave, <laughs> right? Look at the territory because you don't know what happened in that home previously. You don't know what happened, especially if you having dreams every night. Now, I don't know how long you've been living there. Now, if it, if it's haven't always been happening since you've been living there, then it, then you have invited something in there to live, and it could be what you watch on TV. TVs are portals. Your phone is a portal. Anything that connects to this to your mind or soul, that thing's a portal. And a portal means a path, a path for demons to be like, whoop, whoop, we in here. Uh, oh, we're going to follow her. Oh, oh, she's clueless about these different things. So we can tag along with her and then we can torment her. That's why you can't be ignorant of the same device. You can't just be hugging up on everybody. And if you begin to notice different things are di things are happening differently and it's demonic, then you have to start uh, um, looking at the things that you have been entertaining or inviting in your space and then begin to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal those things. So, you can so anytime I feel my home ain't what it needs to be, because I'm a target. I have to understand I'm a target. And so I have to do spiritual uh, deliverances and uh, um, um, casting out, not casting out demons, but what I'm saying is uh, getting demonic stuff off because I don't know who's been putting stuff on me, fam. And so I stay on guard about this stuff because I know who I am and whose I am. But I don't worry about it because we have more authority. But if you're ignorant, they'll enter it. Wherever you're ignorant, they'll enter it. And you just got to ask God to give you more revelation about that so that you can have sweet sleep. And the scripture that the word of God I always quote is he gives his beloved sweet sleep. And so I don't care if a dream comes tonight. You wake up and say, he gives his beloved sweet sleep. I will sleep well tonight in Jesus' name. I command every demonic, tormenting spirit to leave me now, leave my house in Jesus' name, and then go to sleep. A lot of us, we, <clears throat> a lot of us, we be watching crazy stuff before we go to bed and wonder why our sleep is rattled. Hope that. Man, four years without a honey bun. Pro appreciate you, man. Y'all remember my struggle, man. Man, a lot of y'all been rocking me for a long, maybe five. Man, it's been more than four years. I definitely ain't had no honey bun since I've been married. My God. Hmm. Maybe about five, six. How long have I been married? Three? Going on four. This is fourth year. Now, them vegan donuts God may have to deliver me from, but at least they're vegan. But I'm not vegan, but, you know, it is what it is. Yes, it really helped a lot. What you're called rambling, I call it great answer. Thank you, Coach. You're so welcome, Kier. Uh, Miss Walker says, awesome, man of God. Thank you for sharing. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate your work for God. Have a great day. You too, Jess. A lot of you all on lunch break. A lot of you all are going back <laughs> to work. So I'm glad. I hope this kind of gets y'all to get over the hump of y'all's day. Joshua says, Hey, Coach, thanks for your advice the other day about dealing with fear and being uneasy in my day-to-day -day life. Definitely helped a lot. Have a great day. You too, my brother. I'm so glad it was a blessing to you, fam. God gets the glory. Lexi Cooper says, hey, Coach, how do I forgive myself, heal and move on with God from the sin that I put myself in and were naive about it? The last thing you said, you was naive about it. Give yourself grace. Give yourself grace. You didn't know no better. There's a lot of things I did. I didn't know no better. So I don't put unnecessary burdens on something that I didn't know no better. You were young. You, 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 or you was just young in the faith and you didn't know. And no matter what sin you've been put in, God can turn that sin into a win. How can you win from that sin? Who can you help with that sin? That habit that once that you did, who can you help with that? And what I mean by that is, is that you got to change the way you see yourself. And the reason why a lot of people feel that way is because they have a false understanding of how God views them. You view yourself the way you believe God views you. That's powerful, God. We view ourselves the way we believe God views us. And so if you have a poor view or a poor understanding of how God views you, then you're not going to view you the right way. So you got to go deep into the scriptures to see how God views you. What I would do is, is do a Google study on God's attribute of love and God's attribute of forgiveness and sit in those scriptures and really walk through those scriptures and really begin to let those scriptures touch you and, 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 and change you. Right. And understanding, man, that you didn't know no better. Now let's do better. Right. And so 
where does God want to put you now? Because if your mind is, is, is staying put in it, then how can God put you into something better? How can God move you if you made a monument of a mistake? Never make monuments out of a mistake. And what I mean by that is that you monumentize this moment and you make it an idol. A lot of us, we make our mistakes our idols and we wonder why we can't go no, uh, uh, move from it. So how do you forgive yourself? Number one, you got to uh, realize that you, you knew no better. The second thing you got to say, okay, what can I learn from that so I won't burn from that again? Next, you got to say, okay, if God is forgiving me and forgotten about it, I got to forgive and forget about it. And that's the process of healing is get a sheet of paper and write down what you did. And beside, I want you to write down how God views you despite what you did. How has God shown his love to you recently? How has God showed you his love today? How has God showed you his faithfulness towards you? If God, who was your judge, sees you in a loving way why are you judging yourself as if you the eternal judge and then what you do is you practice that activity over and over again until it comes out of you also want you to write down on a sheet of paper what what have you learned from that situation and i want you also write down how can you earn from that situation and then go forward and actually and write yourself and write up under all that why must i forgive myself forgiveness is giving you the opportunity to go forward Dream, be inspired, create. Say, okay, God, how can I turn this into a ministry? How can I help women with this? God, how can you use this and turn it around for my good and help other people do good? Start getting more positive thoughts and creative and purpose-driven, and then you'll find yourself driven way, way, way past from these monumental feelings that you once had about the mistakes you once made. Hope to help. New Hope says, repent and be saved. Ratchet, that's right. Get your life right. Get right with God. Or get things right in God. So get if you're not saved, get right with God. If you are right with God, make sure you're righteous in God. And what I mean, not by the end of the righteous of Jesus, but make sure that you're, you ain't out here playing with them stuff, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that's right. Repent and be saved. Rapture is near. God is coming back. Nothing to be feared, afraid of, but let me see what else we got here. Man, y'all got some good questions. That's funny you said that, man. Talked to Brandon yesterday, man. We will see what happened. We don't know. We ain't going to give y'all no false hopes, but we'll see. Me and Brandon, we cool. We've been cool, but, you know, we've we been talking, but we don't know. So I don't even want to get y'all hopes up now, but. You never know what might be around the corner. Last question, Jessica, or Jessica Jason, last question. I got about, I'm going to go to the one hour mark. Last question, coach. If sometimes I have issues standing firm, stand firm, Jesus, Lord, and Holy Spirit live is in me. It's like my heart, my heart in opposition says it's not true. Uh, that's the, you, the demons. Anytime you have mental illnesses like that, and you begin to identify when you begin to identify with mental illness, you begin to open the door for more demonic activity, and they're going to always try to war against um, the things of God, right? Uh, if it's true or I don't believe it's how do I overcome this? I know it's faith that pleases God, and I feel don't look to please God, be a pleasure. Like what I mean by looking to please God, like that's works righteousness. Like I, I, I got to please him in order for him to be pleased with me. That's not what you do. You don't please to be pleased. You know what I'm saying? Um, You don't please to be appeased or whatever the word play is. His, his wrath has already been appeased by what his son done, right? So his love is there for you. His grace is there to help you grow. His love is there to help you level up. His love is to, 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 to remove out all those things. So you have to change the way mentally and understand the gospel, understand what the gospel grants you and the love that he wants to share with you so that you won't be trying to do things for God to show love towards you. And a lot of times we do that because of how our fathers did us, right? And we think that if I if I get good grades, my mama love me. If I do this the right way, my father will love me. That's not how God works in his covenant now, right? I may not be showing faith. I like looking at your. Uh, I like looking at your skin, knowing you're black. But you mind saying, "Nah, you white." I know. Oh, uh, he's been okay. Let me keep going. There's just not sure. You surety is in the scriptures, and they, they're not going. They're not going to just let you read the scriptures. That you get your surety comes from inter, your interpretation and your comprehension of the scriptures. 
and um, better understanding God's love towards you and begin to allow that to, to cause that faith to rise up in you so that you can be able to cast down vain imaginations. So what I would do is this. Anytime you get a thought that's not, you know, it's not divine, you write the thought out. And where's my book at? This book would be a good book for you if you don't already have it. Because it has worksheets in it, facts or feelings. It has it has worksheets for you to really process your feelings, facts or feelings. So you write down, first off, if you get the book, you vent. You vent to God. Vent. Get it out your system. And then you begin to go through certain questions about how you feel. And you process your thoughts. You got thought bubbles. You process your thoughts and you determine whether or not it was a vain or valid thought. The more you make this a practice, the more you can immediately do it mentally anytime this stuff rises up in your mind. Hope that for time's so going to keep going. <clears throat> DeAndre says, what's up, coach? How do you know if people are sent from God or not? You know if, if, if you know what's sent if you went. If you know you went with God and you with God, you'll know what's sent by God. Let me give you some another book. Right, oh, it's right there, but it's kind of jacked up. This book right here will help you. Anyone who has questions like this, Counterfeit or Counterpart. It talks about how God confirms things. It show it, it gives you examples of how to test things. It begins to show you different things about that. So I'm going to go over quickly what I have in this book. And I think even more, the activities in the book will help you. You know if it's sent by God when it's similar to God. And if you're not familiar with God, you want to know if it's similar to God. The more familiar you become with God, see the prerequisite. See, when you put in the work, the work will put you in places. When you put in the work, the work will put you in places. And what I mean by that, if an athlete trains hard in the off season, they put that work in. When the pressure comes, they work puts them in. The work Steph Curry put in, the work Clay Thompson, the work Jordan Poole put in, the work uh, um, um, all the other uh, Draymond and Andrew Wiggins, all them put in, the staff put in, the trainers put in, put them into the championship, and they won. The prerequisites of our relationship with God helps us in the and the other facets of the relationship with God. So if I put the work in and I spend time with him and I become familiar with him and, I be re- and I'm repenting and turning away from sins and I'm cooperating with the sanctification process and, and I'm just putting the work in and, and still in my life and, and thus with God, if I'm putting the work in, it makes the work easier when it comes to dealing with the dealings of God. So the more you become familiar with God, you will know what's similar to God. The T-E-S-T, that's how you test if it's from God. First, you test its temperament. If it's too excited, if it's too zealous, if it's too pressuring, it ain't God. Next, you examine the end result. If I go along with this person, if I go along with this thing, what would be the end result? Start doing some forecasting. Start calculating. Is this person, does this person even embody the things of God? Because they don't embody the things of God. I see some things at night that's, we're not talking about perfection, but it's drastically wrong. Then I can't go along. Next, you got to look at the scriptures. Is what this person embodies scripturally, is scriptural. What does the scripture say about this? Also, I got to ask, is it the right timing? Also, got to examine your temperament. Am I even ready for this? Or the timing? Is it even the right timing for this? If it ain't the right timing, then it's not God. Hope to help. Let me see what I got left around here. And y'all just keep on putting more questions, man. More questions. Rapid fire, y'all. Please forgive me. I've repented, but I, okay, okay, like doing soul tossing. I repented, but I know there are some things I have been holding on to, and at times I don't know how to let some things go, like dealing with the soul tie. Gotcha. I hope that question up. And if you're struggling with soul ties and strongholds, my friend, check out this book, The Purpose of Freedom, if I can find it. Helps you better understand soul ties and uh, how to untie them, and better understand strongholds and how to uproot them. It's be a good book there for you, my friend. Uh, Cindy says, what about these end times? I know tribulation is coming, but how much are we supposed to expect him to protect? I fully expect him to protect. There are some people that are, who are going to not benefit because they didn't have enough oil in their lamps. The best thing to be, I'm doing a video. I'm working on a video on how to last these last days. I'm going to upload it pretty soon. I'm going to do it pretty soon. And I'm going to really talk a lot about that. So hang on, Cindy. But, uh, what about these end times? Uh, make time in these end times, extend your time with God, make more time with God, become more subtle than God because he'll lead and God. If, if he could take care of Elijah by guiding him to feed him and protect him, even in, because God knows how to work with what he has to work with. God don't got, there's no food shortage in heaven. Ravens can still be hired. 
<laughs> there's God ain't just because times just because there's food shortage, no matter what happens, God can still get food to you. God's still gonna take care of you. The issue is what type of food you can't be bougie in the end times now. You can't be over there expecting filet mignon and God gives you manna. You gotta take what he gives you. What I'm saying is God ain't God ain't short in his provision. It's all about making a provision for him to be inside of us to help guide us so we can be prepared. Didi says, hey, coach, how to deal with unsafe friends who who are very combative whenever I express biblical. Anytime. That's why the Bible says do not give your pearls to swine because they will only trample upon it. And then they will eventually turn and then attack you. This is exactly what's happening. I only give pearls to those who want to wear a necklace. I only give a pearl. I only give pearls to people who treasure them because what happens is let's break this scripture down. When you give pearls to swine, swine don't know the difference between a pearl and a rock. So. A swine can interpret whether or not that's really a gem or if that's just dirt. So what they'll do, you'll give them a pearl. Hey, man, God is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Uh, or you should change that. They're going to trample on that. That don't make no sense because the, the, the little things of God confounds the wise. God's wisdom is not the world's wisdom. They're not going to understand because you have been enlightened. You have been illuminated by the spirit of God. You know how you you interpret things different than them because you have insight from the light, the Holy Spirit. Right. And so when you express pearls to swine, they're going to trample them. If you continue. Now, I have a two pearl limit. I'll give you a pearl. See what you do with it. I give you a second pearl to see if you just misinterpreted what I said. That's if you come to me. I never give pearls to people ill-advised. If you're not coming to me asking for a pearl, I don't give the pearl. If the Holy Spirit is not gripping me to give you a pearl, I ain't giving the pearl. Because God, the Holy Spirit has to grind out things to make them receptive to the pearl. We, we become zealous with our evangelism and we cast pearls because of our relationship with them, not with the relationship with the Holy Spirit. So when you cast your pearls because you love them so much, then you're hurling and giving pearls unnecessarily. You have to do it in relation with the Holy Spirit because I give the second pearl and see what you do with it. If you trample on my second pearl, I ain't throwing, I'm done. I've had plenty of people that come to me. They ask me a fight about the relationship. I give it to them. I give them my heart. I like, hey, man, you should do this. And I give it to them. The second time I'm like, just, I give you clear my relationship. If you still date the guy, you still go with the girl, then I'm going to celebrate it. Go do you, boo. <laughs> yeah, because if I give you another pearl, you're going to attack me now. Swines attacks those who they're intertwined with. Swines protects their idols. You can't be a rival to somebody's idol. They will bite you. You cannot give biblical principles, biblical pearls to people who want to be in the world. You give them a pearl, they may be cool with you the first time, maybe cool with you the second time, but if you throw the pearl again, they're going to think it's a rock, a very shiny one. They're going to think it's a rock, and they're going to think you're attacking their idol, and they're going to attack you. So what I would do is pull back from them so that you won't get unnecessary attacks from them. Marino says, so it's bad to hug everyone? You, you, listen, listen. Hugs opens. You got to be very careful who all you open to. Right. If you open yourself up, you don't know what that person has been open to. So usually I dap or I take the aggressive position. So if I shake someone's hand, my hands on top of theirs, the door is closed. If I open, see, I never give the openness. I let them know this closed off, fam. Or when I hug somebody, I don't bring, I don't, I never bring nobody in. It's either side hug that's closed off. You're not, you're not with my heart. Side hug. Um, if it's a family member, I hug up on it because, you know, it's my family or my wife or whatever. But other women, no, I don't open myself up because you don't know what they, you don't know. So it's not always witchcraft. So let me make sure I make that clear. I'm not saying you can't hug nobody, but you got to be cautious on who you open yourself to. Because spirits will jump on you. Spirits will follow you. You don't know people. Sometimes the most you got to sometimes you got to watch the people that are really trying to get a hug really trying to get close those people trying to put something up not all the time they may be subconsciously you don't know what the, you people are so much vessel you don't even know what the demon's trying to use them for so i definitely wouldn't hug everyone at church that's not wise 
um, because you don't know what's inside them. I got to go, y'all. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've been going a little long. Hmm. What are your thoughts on today's masculinity? Is is moved far away from masculinity described in the Bible, and is demonized into perverting masculinity to make it more feminine, um, to put an end to it? Because if you put the end to the man, you put the end to the family, put the end to the family, put the end in society, put the end society in the end of a nation. You attack the man first. You attack the mold of the man. You want you make men not be desire to be Christ like. And when they want to be like everything else, that's why it's no coincidence that pants are tighter. They're they're feminizing the man on purpose, and the men don't know it. Man purses, uh, uh, pants, tight pants, and all these different things is a part of a plan to feminize the man, to make man the more weaker, and to create the even Adam situation again, where the woman calls the man to stumble, making the woman the head of the house, knowing that she's the more emotional one, knowing that she's the weaker vessel, and that the weaker vessel can be used to to repeat Eden all over again. So men have to protect their Edens to make sure that they are operating in biblical masculinity, not a uh, 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 Pharisaical uh, masculinity, but they operate in sacrificial self uh, sacrificial selfless love. Of scripture supported uh, uh, foundations and principles to ensure that masculinity uh, uh, is 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 seen to young men, so they won't uh, try to comprehend the world's uh, devised plan to put the end to manhood. Hope to help. Christopher says, "Why am I afraid of saying to ask for help? Is pride possibly, and uh, it could be pride, and it could be that you don't want people to really see what's going on inside, and that's that's wisdom. You don't want to be vulnerable with everybody, but if God opens the door for you to be with the, someone that you could be vulnerable with, please take that opportunity because then that's how you can be healed. How to stop trying to rescue everybody, realizing that you're not God. God's open twenty four seven. I close at ten. I close at nine and ten. My last coaching session be over at nine o'clock, ten o'clock, and I, I'm closed. And I give God, I give people to God. And you have to be, you have to look inside yourself to f- examine whether or not you find identity or you find worth in helping people. You cannot, your worth cannot be even determined by the worth you give people. Because if you do that, when people don't receive your worth, you start plummeting in value in your mind, and you, do, you start being devalued in what you offer. Hope that. How can we use your books and the word in hand in hand? Be led by the spirit of God on that. Even with my books, be led by the spirit of God. Um, there's a lot of scriptures in my books. I'll put a lot of scriptures in my books. I endeavor to write books that are scripture supported. So there's going to be a lot of scriptures in the books. And so be led by the spirit on how he wants you to cross reference on that for sure. Because it may be that this is the season where he just really wants you in the word and not in my books. And please follow the Holy Spirit in that regard. I got to go, y'all, because y'all just keep adding more questions. I'm trying to get up out of here. Love you all. Y'all be blessed. Man. Nick says, hi, I have a physical disability called cerebral palsy. I'm 33. I fall. I fall in seeing escorts and feeling down about finding a girl. <clears throat> That's what happens oftentimes, my friend, when we begin to identify ourselves with our issue. Our issues create more issues because our identity is in it. Because now when you identify with your cerebral palsy, you think that you can only get love by paying for it versus the love that God has already paid for. That I've, I've seen a lot of people with disabilities get married still. It doesn't matter what it is. God can still heal you. God can still fill you. And God can still get glory out of your life and bring you a wife that you don't even have to settle for those different things for. And so you, when you identify yourself with God, and you allow his love to cast out all fear, then you won't find yourself paying for love because love has already been paid from above for you to grow in the things of God so that you can eventually find your love. Got to go, y'all. I had to help him because I uh, got to go. I helped some of you all already. If I already answered your question, please forgive me if I skip you. Because I already answered. I already answered George Jessica a couple of times. Uh, Ari says, I used the purpose singing this book to teach young adults at my church. Amazing book for God gets the glory. Thank you, Ari. Please, anyone who's ever used my books in that capacity, let me know, man. It's, it's, it, not that I need the encouragement, but it's just cool to hear, man. So thank you, Ari. Please let me know what they're getting from the books. Give me some testimony. Don't give me. That sounds so demanding. If you can, please give me some testimonies from your people, how the books are blessing them. This helps me create better resources. Please let me know if there's other, uh, 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 just give me some feedback. So, Because I'm writing new books and I want them to be uh, usable for bigger groups. And I want to make sure I'm giving exercises. I just want to hear your feedback on that. So please let me know. Ari says, how can I find an accountability partner? I had your greatest accountability partner is the Holy Spirit. Start there. Start with the Holy Spirit. He's the greatest accountability partner. 
we become so familiar with the familiar that we forget about what's even more familiar than the familiar. What I mean by that is the spirit world is 10 times more dense and more whatever. We are more impacted by the spiritual than we are the natural world. And so what I would do is, Holy Spirit, it's me and you, fam, let's rock out. I had one, but she's been pulling away. You shared that we should have multiple ones. So how? Start with the Holy Spirit and then let the Holy Spirit then surround you with the right people to hold you accountable. That's the best advice I can give you. God bless you too, Didi. You're so welcome, my brother. I had to answer your question, fam. Last one, because we're at the bottom. Erica says, how to overcome prayerlessness? Pray. Be intentional. Fight through the resistance. There's a 30-second window. The enemy is going to try to give his uh, toughest uh, pressure as soon as you try to press in. But if you press through that 25 seconds to a minute of pressure, you hit the sweet spot of prayer. How to, uh, you got to set the tone for prayer. You got to set the environment for prayer. What that does is you got to say maybe uh, start first off, you got to start um, um, exposing or determining the uh, the top things that hinder you from prayer. So if it's your phone, then what I would do with my phone, I would turn my phone off and put it in the car. Early on, I would put my phone in the car outside. I'll go to the house and pray. Or that's when I, before I had an iPhone. Now I put it on airplane mode and I just, I go to a different room. I put my phone in a different room. Because if you cut your phone off, you won't be distracted by, by notifications. Uh, uh, and uh, that's what helps. Whatever it be, whatever has become a distraction of prayer, remove yourself from distractions, set the tone, set the place of prayer, and you'll find yourself in a sweet spot of prayer. Thank y'all so much for joining. If you need one-on-one -on -one coaching and you need my support in any kind of way, let me know. If you need relationship development, relationship support, with yourself, with a significant other, with God, spiritual development, singleness, purpose, branding, let me know. I would love to support you in that way. Uh, check out the other books I have, like Facts Over Feelings, The Wholeness Journal, uh, The Purpose of Singleness. That'd be good for those who, uh, like the Ari said, has been a benefit to a lot of singles. Dating Prep, um, Counterfeit a Counterpart, World War Me, The Purpose of Freedom, Book on Spiritual, uh, Book on Soul Tie Strongholds, Children's Books, T-shirts. If you want to support, we accept your, we uh, uh, accept your generosity in advance. We love you all. Y'all be blessed. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.